so how to develop compensation plans for new sales reps or the three primary steps for developing a compensation plan for a new sales rep. So this is a big topic and there's lots of ways of doing it. We're focusing on a GP version versus a top line revenue version. So don't get caught up in that. If, if you do top line, if it works for you, it works for you. We just want you to take a look at what we're doing around new reps that get started with you and how to protect yourself to make sure the, the GP quota and their base salary are aligned. So let's start with that one first. So we start with a minimum standard, which is four and a half times their base salary in, in GP. That's the first goal we go for that we have to get them to accept or buy into when we first start. Now, on a bigger scale, compensation, when it, which includes base salary and includes their commission, much later on, obviously that number should be bigger. Now, when you first start out, obviously the base salary typically is going to be more than the commission, depending on how well they do the first year. Well, we have clients today where the sales professional has a 70% of the entire compensation plan, 70% of his commission, and 30% of his base salary. How awesome is that? Here you have a guy over in New York City, a software a firm that we work with, where well, the guy was doing $18 million in software sales, and his base salary was $105,000 a year, but his compensation was nine fifty. dollars so, of course, he used to complain all the time to me about why he couldn't get more base salary. I was like, look, you're making a lot of money on commission, which is where it should be. And we can work on trying to get more commission for you, which is what you want. But the guy was a madman. I mean, a phenomenal sales professional. So, but the first year and how you set the baseline with your sales rep sets the goal or sets the baseline for everything going forward. Now, we've also given you today a attached to this video is a sales professional compensation worksheet for the first year. Now, we figured out in, in this example is if you run the numbers for three straight years and your sales professional stays on schedule, you have a high chance of them having a 60 to 70 percent of the commission as far as the compensation and somewhere between 25, 30, 35 percent of their base salary, which is the exact situation you want to be in. You want to be paying more commission than base salary. I've even seen some models where. The comp as your commissions grow, they pay more, you can pay less and less base where there's no base at all and it's all commission and some residual base commission based on some managed service opportunities. We've seen that work really well. But you've got to have, it all starts with how it starts out. So let me give you an example. So let's say you have a sales rep that comes in at $50,000 base. And of course, base salaries are market driven. In New York City, I see base salaries at 100, 110, 95. And some other markets are less, so it depends on where you are in the country. But let's start with the $50,000 because I want to get this. One of the things we always talk about is marketing quota versus GP quota. And you've got to get those two aligned together. And I'm going to show you how we do it. So at a $50,000 base, right away your GP quota is $225,000. So that's step one. we got to get you to agree to that right from the beginning so we've got some mind share. And then we look at the company's average GP sell. So for this sake of this example, let's say it's $2,500. Well, that's about 90 sales you have to do a year or about seven to eight deals a month. So then how many meetings per month do you have to do to do eight deals? So let's call it 16 to 20. So now your meeting quota or marketing quota, as we call it, is now four to five meetings a week. So can you do that? That's step one. And we want to look at that really hard for 90 days maybe as high as 120 will give you some more room if you're tiering to that number because if you can't hit the gp the, the marketing quota then you can't hit the gp quota in this example the gp quota is about almost 18 18 to 19 thousand dollars a month now if you can do the 19, 18 19 thousand dollars a month in the gp quota by doing less meetings because you close some big deals i'll take it right what i won't take if you're not hitting the gp quota and you're not hitting the marketing quota because if you can't do both or one or the other, then we don't have a chance for this to work out. And we always start with the, G, with the marketing quota first. Because if you can't get the meetings, you have no shot at getting the GP quota. You just don't. So, and a lot of times what we see is clients have sales professionals who have who've been selling them company on them hitting the GP number. And they come close, they come close, they come close. Or sometimes they're nowhere close, but they, they sell the pipeline plan that they have a shot at it. But there's no meeting numbers to support that growth. But nobody's looking at that. They're just looking at the number. And that way they get to stay there longer 
without performing to the GP number that you've given them when you first started. So it's really, really simple for us. If they can't hit the GP, the, the, the marketing quota first and the GP quota second, you only have to do one simple thing to solve this problem. Release them back to industry. Release them back to industry. Release them back to industry. I hope this was helpful. Gary Beecham, President and CEO, SPC International. Thank you.